Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. What a joy it is to meet you. Even today for something good that God has for you. And I know today you connecting with this moment is not by accident. God has brought you right to this moment. And I know God is going to meet you at the point of your need. Something will be addressed about the issues in the depths of your heart. Things that you've been wondering and you've been asking God. You'll find an answer today. I'm sure God will visit you. And today we're going to talk about something very special the Lord laid upon my heart just for you. Are you ready to receive? I know. Let's go. Today we're going to see about the blessing of waiting. Now, waiting is a part of our lives. The world, we see a lot of advancement. And advancement is many times in terms of speed. There was a time people used to walk. They used, then they got a cycle. Then they got to use the automobiles. But then... They can fly from place to place, saving time. Also in food, we have instant foods available, instant Chinese noodles available. You know, there's always the speed that is spoken about. We speak about speeds in the internet and how that is so helpful to us. It's all good. Speed is good. But that doesn't change the fact of waiting because God has created the law of life and law of waiting is something very important. For example, when you sow a seed of a mango, it takes a while to germinate, grow, takes a few years to be to a place where it's mature to yield fruits. And there is no short cuts because shortcuts lead to short circuit may i repeat it again shortcuts lead to short circuits the same way we also see how uh, the process of birth from the moment of the fetus being formed in the womb of the mother till uh, the day the baby is born, close to 10 months. And, and that's part of the law of life. So there is a waiting time. And even in our lives, God has destined things for us. He has destined things for you. Maybe you're going through a wilderness time, something like a very difficult phase in your life you have a lot of questions when is this going to happen for me when are things going to happen for my children maybe it's concerning your marriage it's concerning about uh, a breakthrough in your finances and things have been hitting your heart and you've been questioning you've been wondering you've been even praying about it that's an answer for you lamentation chapter 3 Verses 25 and 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. In these two verses, we find the word good twice. It is good to wait for the Lord. Now, there are two kinds of waiting. One is the waiting in the world where people wait for things to happen. People are waiting for things to materialize, for the business to take off. You know, that, that's the usual thing that we all have. But as a child of God, when someone gives their heart to Christ, when someone accepts Christ, 
then you are given the opportunity to engage in another kind of waiting where you wait for God. Amen. Now, the difference between waiting for something to happen and waiting for God to do something, it's a sea of difference, a mountain of difference. I want to tell you, you know, as a child of God, you know, we need to switch gears from waiting for happenings to waiting for God's doings. Let me say it again. We need to move from waiting for things to happen and into waiting for God to do it. The Bible says, you know, our God is a doer. He is not a God who is so sedentary, so, so static. He is not a God who is dormant. He is not an absentee God. He is not extinct from the affairs of life. No, he is an active God. He is willing to be involved in our lives. Throughout the word, uh, we see how God starts with action right from creation till the last book of Revelation, the last chapter, talks about God in action. So God wants to act in your life. He knows what you're going through. He knows that health concern that you've been battling. He knows that financial thing that you, you feel that if you get that hike, if you get that breakthrough, it, it's going to help you. He knows that. And, and God's wanting to act on your behalf. But there's always a process of waiting. And the Bible says that waiting is good. I want you to believe this because God's saying it in his word. It is good to wait on God. It is good to wait for God. God. That means it's not going to end in a negative way. Your waiting is not going to put you in a place of shame because not you're not waiting for happenings. You're waiting for God's doings. The Bible says in Psalm 118, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Amen and amen and amen. You know, God's doings are always marvelous. It's going to be marvelous in that marital thing, in your marital destiny. It's going to be marvelous in your health thing. It's going to be marvelous in that thing concerning that stagnated a situation. God's going to break through for you. It's going to be marvelous. And it's going to be beautiful. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has done, you see, God's doing everything beautiful in its time. So when God is in action at the end of your waiting, it's going to be marvelous. It's going to be beautiful. And he's going to look into the details. It's going to be beauty. Step by step. I know you're getting excited hearing this. What a joy. I'm getting excited preaching, actually. Wow. Praise God. And today, I'm going to give you a couple of things from the Word of God, how the kind of blessings that we have when we wait. Number one, God strengthens your heart. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Psalm 27, verse 14. Now, David goes through a difficult time. Things that can, you know, make people afraid. Enemies around him and camping against him, even trying to destroy him, to devour his flesh, man-eaters. <laughs> People, you know, horrible kind of opposition. Maybe you're going through one. But right in the midst of that, God really 
put something for us. David writes in Psalm 27 verse 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It's amazing. You know, obviously, the psalmist talks about how right in the beginning that he will not fear because God is his light and his salvation. He also says that his enemies, they fall by themselves. And that's what we read in verse 2. They stumble and fell. So God works, God acts, but there's always a waiting time. And, and he says, wait on the Lord. You're not waiting for things to happen. You're not waiting for nature to act. You're not waiting for somebody to respond to you, a human being. Wait on the Lord. Your focus is on God. If God does it, nobody stops it. When God moves, nobody stagnates the move of God. When God speaks, it happens. When God commands, it is done. So, wait. There's always a waiting time. And, and the blessing is you, you develop a strong heart, especially when you look at the Lord in the time of the waiting rather than looking at the situation. Because many times we are tempted to look at the situation because they are the visible world. When you see that visible people, you know, mocking at you for things have not still happened in your life or that situation that has not been kind of seemingly unchanging. So that's visible. But you need to shift your attention, your focus, your sight. The Bible says that which is visible is temporary. That which is unseen is eternal. Second Corinthians chapter 4, we read that. So into the invisible, to God. Now, you might ask, Pastor, how can I look and focus on an invisible God and that's why we have his word and every time we get into his word we ponder over his word we meditate on his word we think about his word we confess his word we're focusing on God you need not focus on an object or an image no we are called to focus on the word of God so that gives you strength you know, there are many ways that you focus on God. When you praise Him, when you thank Him, when you worship Him, uh, when you confess His Word, when you get on His Word and, and meditate on that. Isn't that amazing? You know, we need to do that in our waiting time. And that strengthens our heart. Proverbs chapter 28, 1 is another beautiful scripture. It talks about how the righteous are as bold as the lion. You know, the wicked flees when no one is pursuing them. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, that talks about boldness. In life, one of the most important things that we ever need is we need to develop boldness. And boldness is not an exercise of mind. It is an exercise of the spirit. So when you focus on God, God grants you that boldness. You're able to have the face like a lion. You know, the, the thing about the lion is it's never threatened. Nothing threatens a lion. The lion is bold at the face of any enemy. So that happens as you wait. You know, you're waiting at this moment for something to happen. But as you're waiting on God, focus on God. God's going to give you a strong heart. You're going to have courage. You're going to have the strength to face things in between that time, between, you know, your Egypt and Canaan. There's a wilderness. So God gives you that strength to go through that wilderness. From the time God speaks to the time of fulfillment, He gives you the strength to go through that in between space. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 8 talks about some Gadites. You know, there were 12 tribes, and one of the tribes is 
God. And so these people who joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for battle, who could handle shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as gazelles on the mountains. What a contrast. Faces like lions, feet like gazelles. Wow. Wow. Praise God. I used to imagine that these men literally had faces like lions earlier. <laughs> You know, when I first read these verses as a young person, but then I got to understand that when they set their face, they are like a lion. They are fearless. They are immovable, even in the face of a raging battle. That kind of strength that God gave them, the Gadites, and their feet swift as gazelles, that is... On one hand, they are bold. On the other hand, they don't waste time. They are on track to reach the destiny God has for them. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7, talks about during the time of waiting. You know, we need to focus on God. God speaks to us. You know, the best part in life is, as I've been through, waiting on certain things, you know, waiting on God for things to happen, for Him to do it. God been always assuring, sending words of promises, uh, words of encouragement, words of guidance. Now, let me read from verse 6. I gave my back to those who struck me and, I, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. That is messianic. Uh, like what would happen to Jesus was foretold. But the beauty is, I gave, it says, I gave my back. I did not hide my face. You know, it is absolutely voluntary. Now, it was not in any way this person who is uh, Christ himself. He was not closing himself from all those attacks. He, in other words, he faced it squarely. Now, how was it possible? Verse 7, For the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I will not be ashamed. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. So, you know, the confidence that Christ had, even going through those times of mockery, persecution, hardship, the cross, and everything before he got the crown post-resurrection was because he knew my father will help me. My father is with me. So he set his face like a flint. That is the face of a lion. Flint is a stone. You have the strength to face. Face. God is giving you that strength today. Because you know, you will never be ashamed. It's not things that are going to happen for you. God is going to do what He has promised for you. Amen. And that's strength. That's number one. Secondly, we see that blessing of waiting on God in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but those who wait on the Lord, again, you see, it's not waiting on things to happen. It is waiting on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, that talks about a new beginning, a renewed life. When it talks about renewing their strength, it's a new life altogether. It talks about an eagle which, when it gets to a particular age, goes into solitude and waits there and picks off its feathers and then wait for new feathers to grow. Even it breaks its beak and the beak actually grows new. Waits for a few days till it gets back new feathers, new beak, 
and soars high again. Amazing to say that God uses this analogy, this example of an eagle for you. You are not a chicken. You are not called to be down under, but up above. Anyone who is in pursuit of the God of Israel is never called to be down under. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 verse 2. God says, I said to you above all nations. Praise God. And he says, these blessings shall come and overtake you. When blessings overtake a man, he is up above. We serve the God of heaven. And by irony, the devil is going to be down below in the hell. And when God is your God, the God of heaven is your God, you're called to soar above. Now, the beauty of an eagle is it's a bird that goes higher than any other bird can go. That even sometimes pilots of aeroplanes spot some eagles in altitudes unimaginable you're called to soar high maybe it's a time you feel like you've lost your feathers you're not able to even fly a few feet you feel like you're not able to walk maybe you're going through a sickness uh, you are going through something which is very difficult you were so healthy once but now fighting battles in your health you are an eagle. You're not going to end up being a chicken. Chicken can all have all its wings, its feathers, but it's not going to still fly where the eagle flies. But you are called to fly high, soar high. Praise God. Scripture talks about how in Christ, when, when we come into Christ, God raised Jesus from the dead, made him sit at his right hand, and we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. That's in Ephesians chapter 2. We read that. You know, verse 6 to 8. So, you know, you are called to soar high. Now, that is a renewed life. And God's going to give you that life. God's going to give you that strength. And how can he give you? Because he has the strength with him. Verse 28 of Isaiah 40. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the hands of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Verse 29. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Amen and amen. See, he is the one who never faints. He is the one who never goes weary. And his understanding is unsearchable. So you might be going through a time of waiting. God's given you a promise. But now things are hard. Things are difficult. But you're focusing on God. You're trusting God. You're praising God. In spite of that, you're not murmuring. You're not complaining. You're saying, God, I'm looking at you and you're going to do it for me. It's not just going to happen. You are going to do it for me. It's going to be marvelous. It's going to be beautiful. Praise God. So what's going to happen is his understanding is unsearchable. People are going to wonder how you had a comeback. People are going to wonder how you, you got so healthy. People are going to wonder how you got to a place of such uh, prosperity in your business, in your life, which was so sinking economically at some time ago. But now God has brought you to a place of bliss and blessing. People are going to wonder, have you got that degree, you know, which was stagnated because of your financial crisis? People are going to wonder how you got such a beautiful family from a place of solitude and loneliness. He is going to do that because his understanding is unsearchable. And he never grows faint. He never grows weary. So the new life that God's going to give you is going to be absolutely unidentifiable with your past. He's going to give you a new glory. You remember the words in Haggai chapter 
to that the later glory is going to be greater than the former glory. In Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19, he says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. Behold, I do a new thing, and it springs forth. Now I'll make a river, rivers in the wilderness, streams in the desert. A new thing. Get ready for God's about to do a new thing in the midst of your waiting. That's not going to go in vain. You're going to reach that place. You're going to hit that place, that top that God has designed for you. For what? For His glory. That people can know there is a God in heaven who can take people from their weariness, from their fainted situation, from that lowliness, from that dust and dunghill, and lift them up and make make them seated with princes and kings for His glory. Hallelujah. There's such an anointing flowing right through. He's touching you. Something is happening. I want you to receive your healing right now. Receive that renewing right now. Your mind is being renewed. All thoughts of depression leaves you. All thoughts that has been pulling you down, it leaves you. Hallelujah. It's a new life. It's a new beginning. Let me finish with Psalm 84 verses 4. To seven, blessed are those who dwell in your house, they shall still be praising you. And that's exactly what we need to do. Dwell in his presence. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. In other words, you don't wander. You don't go away from God. You are on track. No matter how hard it is, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. You're focusing God. You're running your race. As they, rally, as they pass through the valley of Baca, They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. You are called for a destiny of unending strength, unending grace, unending glory. Each one appears before the Lord. In other words, you are not missing your destiny in the name of Jesus. Somebody shouted and amen. I heard that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. You look at the life of Moses out of Pharaoh's palace. 40 years, almost lost everything. But there, God met him at the burning bush. End of his waiting. Renewed his life. Renewed his strength. Never lost his sight. Never lost his strength till his Mission was over in 120 years. God will do that for you. He did it for his people. He'll do it for you. Are you ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful time. Thank you for your marvelous presence. People who have been waiting for you concerning their marital destiny, concerning the financial breakthroughs, concerning things in their health. Today, you are stepping into their waiting and thank you for new strength is coming. You're making them into a lion who can face it squarely and go through what they need to go through to get through to the place they need to get through. You're making them new as an eagle. They're going to soar high and get to that place which is unconceivable to human minds. People are going to wonder, how did you get here from where you were? It is your grace that's doing that. Thank you for healing is flowing. Thank you for financial breakthroughs are flowing right now. Thank you for marital destinies are right now delivered to your people. And your name is glorified. You're setting the solitary in families today. We give you for things have moved today for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. What a blessed day. I know you have been blessed. If you have been blessed, please write us in our email, pastorpaul.prayer at gmail.com. Let us know how you've been blessed. Share this program, which comes weekly to your friends. May they be blessed too. May God's blessing be with you and strengthen you. May you experience the blessings of waiting on God from this day forward.